Bring the crew out here, and again, let's let's deal in uh, the immediacy of this. Heather Dinich, I, I will start with you. Notre Dame, the program that he now leaves behind, has a very real chance of winding up in the college football playoff when all is said and done as we head towards next week. What, if any, impact does this news have on that? It shouldn't have any because as you hear selection committee chair Gary Barta say every single Tuesday, they do not project ahead. So they have to evaluate Notre Dame on its face at 11 and one. And remember, this is exactly the way they evaluate teams who may or may not have a starting player in the lineup the following week for an injury or a suspension. We saw this in the first year of the playoff with Ohio State when JT Barrett went down against Michigan. They knew that they would have have Cardale Jones in the Big Ten championship game, but the committee didn't penalize them for that because they didn't look ahead. They evaluated Ohio State at that moment, and they moved them up one spot to number four. And oh, by the way, Ohio State won the national championship that year, which is the interesting completion to that. By the way, I was just sent a note here. LSU has announced the deal. It's 10 years, $95 million plus incentives. And they say that Kelly will meet the media tomorrow afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Paul Feinbaum, your reaction to this enormous news? It's an extraordinary development, Greeny, to think that someone would leave Notre Dame. That has always been the gold standard in college football. But LSU is, is, is really more impressive these days than Notre Dame. They won three national championships down there since Notre Dame won its last. And I think that's what Brian Kelly wants. He wants a national championship. He lost to Nick Saban eight years ago. He's lost to several times in the playoffs, including to Alabama again last year. And I think he concluded that he could not win one at Notre Dame. He can at LSU because Saban has won down there. So has Les Miles and so has as, as Ogier on two years ago. Well, when Saban was the coach there and won a national championship, Marcus Spears had a pick six in that game. So you obviously <laughs> know this all too well. Uh, Marcus, the idea that he has, he, if, if indeed this is his reasoning and it makes sense, that he feels he has a better chance of winning the whole thing at LSU than Notre Dame. What do we think of that? And, and what, what, if anything, do you make of this hire? No, nah, gee, he doesn't know. He he doesn't feel that way. He knows he has a better chance mm -hmm. of winning a national championship <laughs> at LSU. This man has a seven, almost a seventy-five percent winning percentage over over his career. So he's a winner. Brian Kelly wins football games, and all you like you you and Paul and Heather and and the folks that cover college football. Talk about the playoff, and I pay attention because I love college football, and I think we have the best minds that's covering it. You just got to get in. But Brian Kelly realized once I get in, there is a different level to the teams that I'm playing against. We've heard coaches talk about this before in the past. P-Town and I, that's what I call Paul Feinbaum, when we were at SEC Network. Coaches always say, when you get to the SEC, it's a different level of player. And Brian Kelly acknowledges that. And I know people across the country don't want to hear that. And it doesn't mean other programs and friends, uh, um, schools can't win national championships. But when you have a resume that Brian Kelly has, when you can attract the type of players that you can attract at a program like LSU and come into play in the SEC, because all of these young kids are thinking about, I can go to the NFL and have a long career, you get better players. You have more of an opportunity to compete on the highest level when you get to the college football playoff, and I'm sure that's why the decision was made. Heather, I, I have to bring up one name here, uh, and you raised the name Luke Fickle earlier this morning because Notre Dame becomes an enormous opening here. But the name Urban Meyer is going to be mentioned all over the place, and, and, oh, and it, it is unrealistic to think that it will not at least come up. He was most certainly heavily in the discussion before uh, Brian Kelly wound up taking that job now more than a decade ago. What, if anything, should we be saying about Urban Meyer and that possibility today, Heather? I don't think it's a good idea. I, I don't. Um, you know, Urban... <laughs> <laughs> Urban's made his choices, and not all of them have been great. Is he a good coach? Yeah, he won at Ohio State. We've seen some issues. We've seen some videos. I'm scarred by those videos. Um, look, oh I, I just, I, I'm. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going there, Greeny. I'm I not. Cannot, Sorry. I could not. That's fair enough. I understand all of that. Right now. But, Paul, I'll give you the final word just on this, because we all know that the one thing that matters more than anything else is winning. And Urban Meyer on the college level has the highest winning percentage 
in, in, since World War II of any coach that includes Saban and anyone else you want, do you see any possibility of that? No, uh, and and you're, you're right, Greeny. He ha he could have had the job when Brian Kelly got it. He turned it down to go to Florida, where he won two national championships. I think he's burned that bridge, and quite frankly, I think it would be an atrocious choice. Uh, he has he has burned out everywhere he's ever been. He has not shown us anything at Jacksonville, and I think Jack Swarbrick, the athletic director, is far too smart than to make a mistake like hiring Urban Meyer. Fair enough. That's well said. All right, Paul, I'll talk to you on the radio later today. Guys, thank you, Heather and Paul. Outstanding, as always. Let me bring it out to the group here, because this obviously is a story that has reverberations everywhere. This is Brian Kelly's new Twitter uh, oh, handle, by nice. the way, his oh. new bio. The new avatar already has all the LSU gear on it. Colin Baton Rouge. We are told, I'm, I'm being told literally as we speak here, that he met with his Notre Dame players this morning for 11 minutes. 11. Uh, I, I don't have any further details on that conversation. 11 minutes. Is he wearing this much purple? Notre Dame had, had hints of purple. Hold on, hold on. Had don't, hints. Don't let, don't let Lincoln Riley off the hook either. Like, both of them need to be oh, in this conversation. 100%. And I was thinking, like, when they when the coaches come into your living room, we've been through the recruiting process. <laughs> they tell your mom and dad, like, yeah, we're going to help turn him into man, get him ready for the real world and I was kind of annoyed by that in in light of hearing all this news but then I realized nope they're doing it they are just yeah. like don't trust real anybody world. you're gonna get lied to it's all a business we're trying to get more money so whatever people tell you don't necessarily believe it because I assume when they were going out recruiting this year yeah. they were like yeah I'm gonna be here and when the, all the guys were in the program they told them the same thing so I don't begrudge them moving on because it's a business but let's treat the whole thing like a business Thank you. Oh, not only certain people get to treat it yeah. like a business everyone right. should be Let, able let's to treat, treat like the this. athletes like a business yeah. too like guys who don't play in bowl games that we all want to hammer and say, oh, no, not a true team guy. Really? Preach. Are these true team Preach. guys? Give me a freaking break, right? Like, this, this is a business. So, as I look at this, I, I don't hold ill will to them. I just want them to be honest. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.